Well, hello, and welcome back to Tucson Tuesday. And I'm going to be continuing on with uh, some more Jelly Jerry designs. This is the uh, next one up chronologically that uh, I currently have. This is the TS-217, as you can actually see. I have it labeled here. This is a front flipper. Pretty much only. It's got a little blade hole there, but uh, at least for my fingers, it's basically not really accessible. But the front flipper... Very, very easy to deploy. And deploying that shows a ever so gradual little drop point there. Oh, looks like I have a little bit of a rolled edge up here by the, uh, the tip. I should probably take care of that. But this is um, what you would probably call a reverse bolster or something like that. Where uh, the bolster on here is actually uh, carbon fiber. Instead of um, what you would see on some other uh, bolster kind of things, uh, which would be more metal up top and uh, some other material down here. So that's uh, a little interesting. We got these nice crenellations going on on the back here. Super nice and comfortable in the hand. This one is uh, 3.47 inches. Uh, so. Definitely a full-size knife. Here it is against the uh, the PM2. And uh, yeah, you can see it's probably uh, pretty darn similar there. Let's see. And here's the, uh, the Benchmade 940. Yeah, a lot smaller than that. Or, <laughs> the 940 is smaller than that, that is. And, uh, yeah, here's the, uh, the Rat number 1, which, yeah, it's a big knife. So we got the bleed stock thickness on here of 3.7 millimeters that I have measured. Uh, and the thickness of the handle here is 0 0.56 of an inch. So it's a couple of tenths of an inch uh, wider than uh, your Spydeco PM2. Well, not by much. And lastly, the weight on this guy. This is uh, 4.46 ounces, uh, or 126.5 grams, right around there. Uh, but because this is kind of a uh, long and slender knife, it really doesn't, you know, feel like a brick like some people might be worried about for um, some knives that are over that uh, four ounce mark or something like that. Uh, this thing is quite nimble. And probably has to do with the fact that uh, the blade is a little slender on it. You know, it still has enough of a height to make it uh, easier for, or easy to sharpen. It's uh, near as makes no difference, a full flat grind. We can see like a, just a little tiny bit of flat up there. But yeah, doesn't really make a difference there. Uh, so yeah, this blade hole. Now I can get my finger in there and if I give it enough wrist I can actually flick it out but I can't really do that without doing a lot of uh, effort and certainly can't access it at all with the thumb. Your mileage may vary I guess maybe a little bit with the uh, with the uh, spidey flick if your middle finger or whatnot isn't uh, quite as large as mine but overall uh, this is mostly for um helping with uh, the blade balancing and uh, whatnot, which uh, already is just a little bit further back than um, you would otherwise have. So, it's, uh, so it does balance at the, uh, the end of the bolster rather than kind of at the finger groove. And uh, I actually do appreciate uh, that for having the blade be a little bit more nimble in general because uh, it feels a bit like uh, you have like... Um, uh, a weighted pommel on a sword to kind of off balance or uh, not off balance, but uh, you know, change the uh, the balance point and uh, everything for it. So works out pretty nice. We also have a uh, flat part here. If you really do want to uh, choke up a little bit more, you can do that. Um, if your hands are maybe a little bit smaller, you might be able to get your uh, middle finger into that uh, finger groove there if you want to um, 
choke up, but for me, it's comfortable to basically just leave that groove alone if I'm going to be choking up on it. Overall, though, I don't necessarily think that that's necessary, mostly because the, uh, the jumping back here works perfectly fine with your finger in the groove, and, um, you know, when, if you are choking up on there, uh, I feel like the, the jumping would, should have probably gone a little bit farther if that was, uh, his intention on there. Uh, obviously you've seen from the, um, the, uh, title and everything. Yeah, this is in 14C28N. And, uh, yeah, we've got a pretty nice pocket clip going on there. It's not a, a single point, but a, a flat sort of area, a little bit angled. Uh, so that's nice going in and out of the pocket. Pretty darn sturdy, you know, it doesn't really have much of flex kind of going on to it. Uh, looking on the uh, the underside here, we can see that we have internal lock bar relief, which I do appreciate a lot because uh, obviously if you're doing a uh, revolse, uh, reverse bolster uh, on a knife, then you're probably uh, looking at a uh, certain aesthetic that you would have for the... Uh, facade i guess for lack of a better phrase of the knife and that seems to work out quite well something that uh, some people probably do find a little bit as a negative here on the underside is um looking at the carbon fiber bolsters yeah, it's uh, perfectly fine here you know obviously you are going to see a little bit of it not being um you know absolutely flush because the lock bar is uh engaged with the blade there but when it's open you can see that does grow a bit and uh if you do squeeze hard down here you can see that carbon fiber uh, does actually flex a little bit it's not something that i at all feel even if i am you know squeezing it life like my life depended on it but when it is open you can kind of feel the edge of that just a little bit there uh it's not pointy uh, it's just something you can feel when uh when the blade is uh, deployed so there you go the uh the plunge guide on here is uh, a lot more uh fast getting down to uh to the edge than uh the uh who was uh the lovebird the two 16 that I looked at last week and uh, Yeah, you do have a couple of sharpenings that you can get to before uh, You will end up getting a smile on there, but it's probably gonna happen at some point But at least the uh, the, the sharpening choil there can easily be extended out so that's uh, It's an easy fix for something like that This thing does have a couple of uh, interesting things going on on the inside, though, so we will definitely uh, take a look at that. Let's see, and T8s here. I definitely do have to uh, remove the pocket clip on this one because the uh, Chicago screw there is going through that. All right, so there's those. And the pivot here. We also have uh, polished titanium uh, pivot colors on both sides. So hey, if you want to anodize those some, some other kind of color, uh, a lot of people like doing a bronze, uh, bronze kind of color along with uh, carbon fiber, then you can do that. Or you can even uh, kind of do those blue and uh, do the rest of it bronze or whatever else might fancy. But uh, yeah, here's basically the uh, little carbon fiber bolster piece. And you can see it does have a little area here with a tab that it uh, sits in and then it uh, attaches there. So it does have two anchor points uh, essentially uh, before there. So it is decently braced. You're really not gonna have any problems with uh, breaking this thing. And let's go ahead and open them up. And we can see that uh, for one, yeah, internal blade stop pin. We have um, steel bearing races, so that's good. And we do have uh, a bit of weight reduction done on the inside. There are just some pockets there. Um, 
but uh you know it is nice that they did it on this side as well as having to do it on the uh the front side to be able to create that bolster there something else that i really wanted to point out here is that uh this pocket clip uh while it only does have one screw it also has a second anchor point with this uh pin here uh which is you yeah, know it's steel so you can pull that out and whatnot so it's actually anchored in uh two points in there and also um you know countersunk into the uh the handle scale itself so this clip ain't going nowhere it's not gonna give you any side to side it's not gonna give you any guff just fantastic something that uh i really do wish that uh, a lot more milled pocket clips had especially with two sons a lot of them uh almost all of them uh only have a uh a single screw anchor point which uh you know a lot of times they do countersink them in there but you know sometimes things don't uh, go exactly to plan in that particular instance and they can get a little bit of wobble kind of going on there we do have a uh blade ramp or uh yeah detent ramp that's the word i'm looking for there <laughs> all right and yeah i can just slap this back together here slide that little bolster carbon fiber piece on there grab my pivot And slap both of those in there and I definitely want to hold on to uh, them from the back side because of course uh, they will slide right out on you if you're not careful there we go with that and uh, then yep kind of hold it on the side that way the uh, the pen doesn't fall out on you as you try to uh, drop that back on there Attach them right back up. Yeah, behind the edge isn't exactly um, the absolute thinnest I've ever felt from Tucson, but it's still very nice and slicey, and it's a full flat grind. So I really haven't had any problems uh, using this for a lot of a lot of different cutting tasks. Works pretty darn well. We do have a uh, lanyard hole sort of thing going on here in the back end too. For uh, those of you who uh, certainly like that sort of thing. Generally on a super large knife, I kind of don't understand the point. I mean, I guess like a, a lot of smaller knives I can understand giving, um, you know, uh, an extra finger to grip on there or something like that. But for these, uh, I don't know, maybe it's easier to uh, pull out of a pocket or something like that. I don't know. Haven't really looked a huge amount into... Um, why people uh who use lanyards actually use them all the time or if it's just kind of something that uh, they like and appreciate this thing is a lot of fun to play with too um you know as far as the front flipper goes uh this thing is uh, pretty difficult to uh end up failing as you can see i'm basically doing there but it's because i'm kind of trying to do a a, a slow roll which you can do but, uh, you know, you can kind of get to the point there where, uh, yeah, you see what I'm talking about. All right. But yeah, super easy to uh, play around with. I like this thing quite a bit. Um, you know, this, uh, little carbon fiber thing here, uh, does look a little, a little, a little bit strange to some people, but, um. Uh, I really don't mind it that much, especially seeing its construction and seeing that it's anchored here and here. Uh, so you you can flex that a little bit, but um, yeah, it, it's really not in any danger of uh, breaking or anything like that. So overall, I really do like this thing. Um, 
And I did like it a little bit more than um, when I uh, had originally purchased the thing. Uh, it's another one of those where I got it and I'm like, wow, this is a little larger than I thought. And uh, usually for me, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> but then again, I'm out, I also live in a place where um, knife lengths really doesn't matter. And that's great because if I was restricted to uh, under three inch knives, then uh, absolutely nothing would actually fit my hand. And that would make me very, very sad. But all right, that's everything I got to say here on the TS-217. Uh, doesn't have a name as far as I know. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. If anybody else uh, does know or something like that, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, leave it down in the uh, description or you don't have access to that, but you can leave a comment, which I would appreciate. <laughs> All right. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.